Hi, and welcome to Top Farmers Know How. I'm Amanda. In this video, we'll cover off how to find cows with mastitis in the milking shed. The sooner you find mastitis, the sooner you can do something about it. So these skills are critical for maintaining milk quality. Remember that mastitis is either clinical when the cow has an abnormal quarter of milk or subclinical when the cow looks fine, but she has a high somatic cell count. You find clinical and subclinical mastitis in different ways. The first sign of a case of clinical mastitis may be that the cow seems mildly lame as she walks into the shed, since a swollen or painful quarter can interfere with a cow's normal gait. Take note of any slow or lame cows so they can be more closely inspected at cups on. Whoever's cupping cows up can look at all quarters of all cows at every milking for signs of mastitis, including differences in size or color between quarters. If a cow seems particularly kicky or sensitive at cups on, take a closer look. Feel any suspect quarter with gloved hands and strip the foremilk out to examine it. Check the teats for hardness or thickening. Clinical mastitis can cause the quarter to be hot, swollen, hard, lumpy, or painful. Quarters that have had long-standing infections may be smaller due to decreased milk production. If you see watery milk, clots, flakes, or discoloration when you strip more than three squirts of milk onto a dark surface or RMT paddle, the cow has clinical mastitis. All cows with clinical mastitis should be marked, recorded, separated, and treated following your farm's protocols. Check out our Treat Mastitis video for tips on handling clinical cases. If you get mastitis milk on your gloves when checking a cow, clean or change them before carrying on with milking. If you miss a case of clinical mastitis at cups on, then at cups off, there may be strings of debris hanging from the teat ends. If you notice a cow like this, follow a clear and consistent system to mark her so that she can be inspected at the next few milkings. For example, you could spray a question mark on her udder in green or blue paint, or set up an alert in ProTrack. The period immediately after calving is the highest risk time for clinical mastitis. So it's best practice to strip every freshly calved cow at each of her eight milkings in the colostrum mob. Watch our Prevent Mastitis at Calving video for more details. Depending on your bulk milk somatic cell count, the weather, and the history of mastitis on your farm, you may also need to continue stripping the milkers regularly throughout the season. A final way you can look for clinical mastitis in the milking shed is to check the milk filter in the plant for clots and flakes. This can tell you if you need to strip the herd at the next milking, or be more vigilant about looking for clinical cases as you cup cows up. You can find subclinical mastitis in the milking shed by doing a rapid mastitis test, or RMT, on suspect cows. You may suspect a cow has subclinical mastitis if she's had a high somatic cell count on a recent herd test. To perform an RMT, add a few milliliters of milk from each quarter and a few milliliters of RMT solution to each of the corresponding wells of a clean RMT paddle. Swirl the paddle for about five seconds. Grade the reaction between the milk and the test solution straight away. If the mixture doesn't thicken, the quarter's normal. A very slight thickening of the mixture is considered a trace reaction, which corresponds to a quarter level somatic cell count of at least 200,000. The thicker the mixture becomes, the higher the RMT score, and the higher the somatic cell count for that quarter is. After you find a case of clinical or subclinical mastitis in the milking shed, you may want to take a milk sample from the affected quarter so your vet can culture it. This identifies the bacteria causing the infection and can also help you decide on the best way to treat it. Results from many milk samples over time can help you understand how mastitis behaves on your farm. You can take the sample in for testing straight away, or you can put it in the freezer and test it later if the infection doesn't respond to treatment, or if she has a repeat case in the next few weeks. It's important to take the milk sample cleanly because you want to culture the bacteria in the udder causing the infection, not bacteria from the environment. Take the milk sample before you begin treating the cow, since antibiotics in the milk may kill the bacteria you're looking for. So, to take a milk sample for culture, Make sure your gloves are clean and dry. Thoroughly disinfect the teat end with a cotton ball soaked in meths or with a clean teat wipe. Allow it to dry. Take the lid off of a clean, unused sample pottle. 
hold the sample pottle and cap with one hand at a 45 degree angle to the end of the teat to avoid milk splattering or dirt falling down from the udder into the open pottle. With your other hand, first strip two to three squirts of milk onto the ground, then direct several squirts into the pottle before quickly replacing the lid. Collect five to 10 milliliters of milk. Label the container with the cow's number, quarter, and the date the sample was collected and keep it in the fridge until you take it to your vet. If you can't submit the sample for testing within 24 hours, then freeze it. So, as you can see, there are a lot of tools at your disposal for finding mastitis in the milking shed. Regularly using all of them will allow you to find clinical cases promptly and to manage a subclinical mastitis problem quickly.